In a previous video, we talked about web requests. And while looking at a web request, we saw an HTTP request method. So I just want to take a couple minutes to explain the common ones, um, what they usually signify, and give you a broad idea of what they are. So HTTP request methods are basically just a way of sort of signifying what you want to do when you're making a web request. So if I go in here and I'm in the browser and I just start typing in a URL, it's going to give me a get method. So if I bring up the dev tools, have the network tab, and I type in like google.com, I want the network tab. And you'll look here, you'll see it's a request method as a get. And basically what I'm saying is that I'm just trying to read data. So gets usually as a general rule mean that you just want to read some data. You don't want to create things. You don't want to delete things. You don't want to update things. You're just trying to fetch some information to read it. And usually, if you are building a web server and you find that you are deleting things or doing something uh, you know, that's actually altering data when users make a GET request, that's a sign that you have designed something poorly because uh, GETs are something that uh, automated tools and browsers and other things might repeat multiple times because they expect it to not actually be altering resources in that way. Now, there are kind of exceptions to this, like if you need to write logs or something, that's completely fine but it's, it's the resources that the users create that it's most frequently is like, you don't want to be altering those. So there's others here like head, um, put, connect, options, trace. There's a lot of these that we aren't going to be touching on. Um, they're used for different things, but we aren't going to need to worry about them in the context of this course. Uh, they'll come up a little bit later when you start doing things like uh, if you're allowing, if you're building like an API that you can connect a JavaScript client to for the front end, you might need to think a little bit more about options and make sure cross uh, that you can actually do like requests from different subdomains and things like that. But we're not going to be looking at a lot of that. Um, the main one we're probably going to see is post, and this is used when you submit a form. So if you are looking at an HTML page that has a form with like your username and your password and you hit submit to log in. Um, that's usually going to go through as a post. Now, there are ways to make it go through as a put or a delete, potentially, if you are um, you know, trying to update something or trying to delete something. So I should take a step back. So post is usually mean, usually signifying that you're creating a resource of some sort. Put usually signifies that you're updating a resource of some sort. And delete means that you're deleting a resource. So post is the most common one because this is pretty much the only one browsers support out of the box when you submit a form. So when you go to log in and it posts, um, that's just kind of like the default way to submit the form. And in a way, you are creating a resource. It seems weird because you're like, well, I'm not creating a user. But what you're actually creating there is a, is a session. So you're logging the user in and creating a session. So a post kind of fits that. But uh, there are ways with JavaScript to make that form submit a put or a delete if you really need to. And we probably won't do it in this course, but you will definitely see some things online where people do that to basically make their backend support the correct methods, and they have to sort of hack the UI with some JavaScript to make that work. What we're probably going to do is we're probably going to set up our backend to just support a post for those things. So if somebody wants to delete a gallery when we get to that point and we create one, we'll probably have a special endpoint with like slash delete at the end of the URL so that we know that it's meant to delete something. And if a post comes in, we'll do it. Now, we won't support gets there because that would be, uh, I think, would be a big mistake that could lead to issues. But we'll definitely, like, sort of, instead of having the hack be in the JavaScript, we'll just have the server support the post if we need to. So the big ones are going to be get, post, put, and delete. Those are the ones we're probably going to be using. Um, I think that covers about everything. Uh, the big thing is that if you just read about them, each different type of request method is a way of sort of signifying that this web request is unique in some special way. Another thing I didn't mention was that when you do a get, because you're only reading, you don't have a, a request body. So whenever you send a get request, there is no request body that has information. Whereas if you do a post, it's assumed that you're trying to create something. So there is going to be a request body, which is usually going to be that form, the data that was in the form you're submitting, that's going to be the request body. So that's another thing that slightly varies between these is that depending on the intent of what the method is, the actual data being provided with it's going to be a little bit different. 